can't just wing it like that. You gotta, you gotta know. We're supposed to bounce off each other organically. You don't talk to me enough to make this organic. <laughs> Pick something to fidget with while we do the intro. Oh my gosh. All right, we realize that this is circling the drain of becoming a full-on lifestyle vlogging channel, but I figure there's other people like me who are consummate last-minute shoppers, and Christmas is just around the corner. So we made a list, and we're checking it twice, and I even have some help from a professional shopper. Are we starting from the beginning? Might as well. Okay. All right, you got it figured out? Got it figured out. For $6, the Marbles Match Safe, made in China. It's a metal container that holds matches. I remember my grandpa always carried one of these for lighting kerosene heaters. They've been out of production for a long time, but somebody's repopping them now, of course in China, but they're still pretty good quality. And you could buy plastic ones, but this metal one is pretty cool. Fill it with some Strike Anywhere matches and you're basically Bear grills. Strike Anywhere that I can't do. Perfect. It's amazing. Like this. Oh, you made that look easy. <laughs> <laughs> For $24 to $47, the Swiss Army Knife, made in Switzerland. I have two. The red one is a Victorinox Recruit. The silver one down here is a Wenger Pioneer, but I believe Wenger's now been bought out by Victorinox, so they're both available from Victorinox. Don't let the low price fool you. These are very high quality knives. I've been carrying one for probably close to 20 years. Fun fact, I actually lost this red one. And about a year later, a customer called me. He found it in a cooling duct when he was cleaning the machine and he sent it back to me. So I think it's like the minimum viable tool set. You've got a basic flat head screwdriver, a basic Phillips head screwdriver, can opener, bottle opener, a blade. The Recruit has a small blade. The Pioneer has an awl, which I never use. But a toothpick if you don't you use it. it. A toothpick. Yep. For $35, the Knipex Cobra XS, made in Germany. It's the same as the Knipex Cobra pliers, but it's small enough to fit in your pocket. This thing is way more handy than I ever thought it would be. I carry it everywhere. It's also possibly the cutest tool that I own. It looks like a little baby raptor. <laughs> For $21, the newborn or red devil no drip caulking gun. I don't know how it works. Amazon reviews are all over the place. It seems to be very polarizing. Some people absolutely hate it. I absolutely love it. So it's just a caulking gun, but the, uh, the plunger doesn't keep tension. So it doesn't dribble out the end. I don't know what else to say about it. Made in China. Pretty good quality. For $36, the Maxion Cyclops Magnetic Work Light. I believe it's made in China. This is the best magnetic work light that I've ever used. I also get more questions about this in the comment section than any other tool that I use. These things are awesome. I've dropped them off of ladders, into buckets of coolant. I've left them stuck underneath the customer's vehicles for months at a time and they just keep going. I've got two of them. I've had them both for over two years. Yeah, I don't think you can kill them. Are they rechargeable? They are rechargeable, oh, yes. Rechargeable. For 77 to $168, the Gear Wrench 90 Tooth Ratchets, made in China. It just depends on what set you buy, how much they cost. Uh, people ask me all the time about like recommending basic hand tools, and I, I never know what to tell them because most of my basic hand tools are 20 years old. I just I don't have a need to go out and buy new stuff. But I had a bad week and I broke two 3 8 ratchets. And I happened to be at the local car quest and they had one of these 90 tooth ratchets on the rack. So I bought it and I really liked it. It was this one here. So I went ahead and bought a bunch more. I got the 3 8 flex, the quarter inch flex, the 3 8 stubby, the regular 3 8 and the half inch long flex. The half inch is a little... It's a little too chunky, in my opinion, but... This feels like I could use it as a weapon. It could definitely be used as a weapon, but the other ones are just the right size. And yeah, I know they're made in China, but these are very high quality tools. For $267 to $350, the Astro Pneumatic 498K Thor Air Hammer. I believe it's made in Taiwan. Thor? 
Yeah, this is an older one that's not the Thor model, which is just an updated version. Uh, but this thing is an absolute beast. You do have to buy the chuck, I believe, separately, and the bits. They will not take the regular bits. These are a larger diameter. The guys at Astro told me that they have not found a chisel bit that it will not destroy, so just be prepared for that. If you live where there's rust, where you work on big trucks and stuff, this tool is an absolute game changer. I mean, it can do stuff that my regular long barrel air hammer just couldn't even touch. This is heavy. Yeah. Uh, hearing protection is required. Definitely required. That would make sense. For $225 to $350, Red Wing boots made in the USA. I've been wearing Red Wing boots for probably 20 years, mm -hmm. and I just think they're the best boots that you can buy because they're made in America. Not only made in America, they're made near here in Minnesota, just on the other side of the Driftless region. But Red Wing has their own tannery. They make their own leather. I mean, the quality is just phenomenal. These are 2233s. These are steel-toed. Those are my old ones. They got holes in them, obviously. You guys, they should be very familiar with this from your earlier videos. Yeah, these are the 953s. These are my current daily drivers. They're pretty much the same boots, but these are not steel toed. And then my newest purchase, these are the Iron Rangers. These are very expensive, $350, which is a lot of money for a pair of boots. I actually bought these used because that's a lot of money for a pair of boots. Uh, I should say, if you've never worn Red Wing boots, it requires a commitment. There's about two or three weeks of pain and suffering to get these things broken in. Yeah. But once you get them broken in, they're, they're very comfortable. I wear these boots 14 hours a day, every day. So they can be resold, but I've never had the uppers outlast the soles. So usually what happens for me is they, they crack right here where, the, where they bend all the time or the toes wear through. These boots have almost smooth soles, which is very good for working in the shop because they don't track dirt and grease. But if you work outside, especially in inclement weather, these are probably not the best boots for you. They're, they're also not insulated, so they're going to be pretty cold in the winter. As far as I know, the only place to buy Red Wing boots is from an authorized dealer. You can't buy them online or you know from Amazon or whatever. You've got to go to an actual store. For $649 to $800, the Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer, made in the Czech Republic. Like a lot of people who have gotten into 3D printing, I never thought I needed a 3D printer. And once I started using it, it was just amazing how useful and handy this thing is. I mean, you need a custom seal driver, you print one out. You need a knob or a lever or something plastic that's broken, you print one out. I will say though that if you're not kind of a computer guy, you just you don't get along with computers, 3D printing is probably not going to be for you. Uh, there are places where you can download models and just print them out, but uh, to really get the good out of this machine, you have to know how to use a CAD program. These Prusa 3D printers are, are not cheap, and there's a lot cheaper alternatives, especially you know Chinese-made printers. I, don't, I bought this one because it was highly recommended, and I have not had any issues with it at all. As far as I know, the only way to buy one of these is to buy it directly from Prusa and ship it from the Czech Republic, which is kind of a process. You have to pay import duties and the shipping's very expensive. I recommend buying it as a kit and assembling it yourself. Mm -hmm. It takes forever, but it saves you quite a bit of money. You did it in like about two days. It took me about eight hours to put yeah. it together. Emotional support gummy bears. Yes. Well, like I said, 3D printing is mm -hmm. very handy, but it is still very much the domain of kind of nerdy people like me. This was your year of reading. Yes, books. I've been trying to read more this year. I think I read six books this mm -hmm. year, which is pretty good for me. Uh, there's been a few years where it's been zero. So uh, we'll start with this guy here for $17, Visual Thinking by Temple Grandin. So Temple Grandin is a kind of a world-renowned animal behavior expert. She's also autistic. And so she claims that she can only think in pictures. She cannot think in words. She calls it visual thinking. People who work with their hands, which is probably everyone who's watching this video, are likely to be visual thinkers. 
navigating our education system is very challenging for people like that, especially when it comes to like algebra and higher level math, yep. because it requires a lot of abstract thinking. So she has a lot of ideas about how to succeed as a visual thinker and maybe things that could be changed in our in our society to make it easier for people like that, people like us. I don't know, yeah, I find it pretty interesting. So she gives a kind of a diagnostic to know if you're a visual thinker, which is IKEA instructions. <laughs> if you prefer the pictures that are in IKEA instructions over like the written words that you're probably a visual thinker. I don't know if I've ever seen IKEA instructions. No, because whenever I put together furniture, you run from the house. Right. But uh, so my my uh, diagnostic was the sewing patterns. So we yes. had we had a sewing project, and yep. the pattern had like written instructions that were just complete gibberish to me. I couldn't make any sense of it. But there were pictures. And I could follow the pictures and we figured out how to, to sew the thing up. Mm -hmm. Never done any sewing before. So yeah. pretty confident I'm high on the visual thinking spectrum. For $20, how big things get done. And the author's name is Bent, oh gosh, Fliverberg. He's Danish, so I can't pronounce his name. But uh, this book is fascinating. I heard an interview with him on NPR and I knew I had to read this book. So he talks about how only something like 8% of large projects are completed on time and on budget. And the problem is so pervasive that essentially no, nobody even wants to do anything about it. He talks about how he tried to implement a course in his college. He's a professor at Oxford. He tried to implement a course to teach students how to accurately estimate the time and you know the budget and time required for a large project. And the other professors kind of intervened to stop him because they felt that if their students actually told the truth about how long things were going to take and how much it was going to cost, that they would never get any work. Essentially, everybody just lies and everybody knows it. So if you're even remotely interested in engineering or construction, I think you'll find it pretty interesting. It's a quick read, too. I think about a fourth of the book is just acknowledgments and references. So it's only about 200 pages long. Yeah, these both, these both came out this year. So if you're looking for someone that likes to read in these topics, these are newer books, so they might not have them yet. All right, now the super nerdy stuff. <laughs> if you're into computer programming, which I'm trying to learn more about, I have Automate the Boring Stuff and Python Playground. These are both Python programming books. This one's kind of a, an intro to programming, and then he gets into some sort of office type stuff, how to do work with Excel spreadsheets and do web scraping, stuff like that. This one is more interesting, I think. It has more practical projects that you can, you can do with computer programming. But you gotta be pretty nerdy to, to be interested in stuff like this. Right. What about gifts for the ladies? Well, we, we don't really do gifts during the year, or... Yeah, I'm like you. I'm it's not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> well, because you always get mad at me for going off cuff because I'm not fast enough and I'm not specific enough, and now you're like, eh. Not as easy as it looks. All right, fine. Well, I don't know. Really I can't help you. I don't even know what to get my own wife, let alone your wife, so you're on your own. Yeah, and we don't do that much gift wise at the holidays because we just buy each other stuff throughout the year. Um, but last year, when Wes was doing a lot of uh, leather working, he did make me some badger bookmarks that I thought were, these were probably one of my favorite gifts. They are Harry you Potter, made them. Harry Potter themed, if you're not up on it, specifically Hufflepuff themed. And you, you got, you made them in the workshop and it was what you were, you were kind of hobbying at at the time. So it made them kind of more special. What about Legos? So the kiddo and I have been in Legos a lot this year. And so one of the ones I got for myself is obviously a Harry, well, maybe it's not obvious, but it's a Harry Potter. It's obvious to her. It's obvious to me. It's a Harry Potter owl that holds pens and nail files. And so it's useful. It's useful and Lego-y, so, and, and when it, I'm working, it, he likes to come over and mess with it, so, you know. It meets the uh, nerdiness threshold also. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but we are so lame. This video are, is really bringing it well, up. You gotta not do that. What, laugh at you? Yes. I love you. <laughs> you don't know what to do when I say that. <laughs> There's gonna be so many outtakes from this video. <laughs> it's gonna be wonderful. Everyone's gonna love it, and it will be a vlogging video then. All right, we'll put the list in the description 
along with links to the things that we can link to. Not everything is available online, but we'll do the best that we can. Thanks for watching. Yep. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. It is Sam. Um, so that's why it has a red and gold scarf. Because I didn't have the right colors. Send that letter. Dear Lego Corporation, wow. how dare you? I'm thinking about going to Bricklink and getting the right ones. You are such a nerd. Such a nerd. Like it holds my nail file, it holds my mechanic pen, my sharpies in here. Let me just wave goodbye.